Johnson wins the 60 meters. Drive to deep center field. The Spartans are Mountain West champs. No movement. Great job. That routine is going to score very high. 2022 was a banner year for fourth year Spartan gymnast Jada Missouri. Double pike to close. Very well landed by Jada. Really well done. She was the Mountain Pacific Sports Federation champion in all around bars and floor. Her season was capped off being named the NCAA Seattle Region All Around Performer and Breakout Performer of the Year by College Gym News. My performance last year was really due to all the hard work in preseason and sort of trying to build up that consistency. I really didn't expect to win that award because it usually goes to someone from a bigger school, a top 10 school. So winning that was awesome for our team and getting noticed as a team. And I just think it was really due to the team culture we have and the awesome preseason and year we had last year. She's so dynamic, and when she performs, she has this performance quality. What the judges are looking for in the dance part of it and the finishes and her forms, she just has the whole package. She exudes so much confidence in a very humble way through her performance, and what I think that translates so well in her leadership on the team, too. She has confidence in herself and what she's doing, but she brings others along with her. For me, as like a former gymnast, as a young person, right, I've always loved like Olympic gymnastics and whatnot. I mean. She is so much fun to watch compete. And she just continues to amaze us in what she can do week in and week out. Jada's leadership role on the gymnastics team has been recognized by her teammates, coaches, and peers. This year, she also took on another leadership position that encompasses all of San Jose State Athletics as the president of the Student Athlete Advisory Committee, better known as SAC. And basically what we aim to do is provide a bridge between student athletes and the upper administration, upper staff. So I really wanted to be the SAC president to sort of be that voice for my peers, not just on my team, but on other teams here as well. And I really wanted to make the most of my time at San Jose State and I figured joining things like SAC and joining things like Beyond Sparta, I thought that would just really make the most of my time at San Jose State and sort of build my network and just give me a lot of leadership skills and networking skills for the future. She's responsible for making sure that we are promoting all things San Jose State, all things San Jose State Athletics. She truly is sort of the CEO of our student athletes in many ways. Ultimately, being a leader herself by inspiring them to go out and give back, whether it's in the community or whether it's on campus, or even just in things that we do through Beyond Sparta, which could involve career development, networking, or beyond. When she came on board, she wanted to do some pretty intentional work, and so some people brought up these, uh, this idea of doing a tampon drive. And it started, it started first with um, us getting asked if we wanted to do a sports bra drive with a third party group. What that spiraled into is Jada and some of her teammates and other SAC reps coming forward and saying, let's combine the sports bra drive and this tampon drive together, and let's collect all of the necessary essential things that young people need that are facing housing insecurity. This last year, and really with Jada at the forefront now as the SAC president, we collected over 8,300 sports bras and tampons that benefited four different agencies that serve young women who are facing housing insecurity. I mean, that's one massive example, but there's a lot of examples like that that show how Jada's leading her peers to impact the city of San Jose and the community. Jada enters her senior year, where she ended her junior year, as a unanimous choice as the women's gymnastics team captain. We talk a lot about it takes everybody, no matter what your role is, even if you're not competing, what are you bringing to the table? And Jada kind of epitomizes that she brings so much to the table in every area. I think my passion is just doing it for one another and sort of hoping that we get that great result. Another of Jada's passions is photography. She started her own photography business and last year treated her teammates to free professional graduation portraits. 
what I find, and Jade is a perfect example, is the more multifaceted an athlete is, the more successful they are. They're more successful in the classroom, they're more successful in their sport, and Jade is a perfect example of that. She isn't one-dimensional. Last year's Spartans gymnastics season ended in Seattle, barely edged out by Stanford in the NCAA Seattle Regional Play-In. With that playoff experience under their belts, San Jose State gymnasts have bigger goals in mind this season. Our goal is to make it through that play-in round, not even be in the play-in round, and be in the day one of regionals. When teams aren't used to being in postseason, when you first make it there, sometimes you feel a little sense of, we made it, and you're just so excited to be there. After you've been, then your next step is, wait, we don't want to just get there. We want to get there, and we want to compete, and we want to move on, and we want to get better. We know we did great last year, but that's last year. We still have to prove ourselves again this year. We're a very, very tight-knit team, and we have a really good family culture. We use that to our advantage. It's helping us really grow and get stronger as a team. And we're just looking to use that to sort of be consistent, be confident, and trust each other, have each other's backs in the season. It takes years of practice and determination to become a collegiate athlete. From an early age, many kids focus on one sport and work diligently to become the best of the best. It's the rare athlete that becomes so skilled at two sports that they must make a decision of one or the other. Spartan freshman Garrett Anderson's basketball skills are difficult to ignore, but so is his 94 mile per hour fastball. The Arizona native grew up believing his future was in Major League Baseball, but a growth spurt changed his plans. His freshman year might have been 5'5". Five, five. They have pictures of him playing as a freshman, and he looks like a 12-year-old, you know? I mean, he was really little. I played center field, and I also pitched. I liked outfield better, but just because of yeah, moving more, but pitching, when you, when you get on there and you're just pumping 94 pass guys, just hucking that, it's, it's just nothing better. While Garrett loved baseball, he was drawn to the nonstop action of basketball. He began visiting the local rec center to play pickup games of hoops and soon realized that what he lacked in experience, he made up for in raw talent. Right before my senior year, there's this place called Inspire Courts in Arizona where I'm from. I'd go there and play a weekend tournament, just like with my friends, we'd make our own team. And I'd play against like Hillcrest Prep, they had a team in it, and like I had like 38 points and I was like, all right, all these dudes are committed D1 on this team. Like there's something, there's something here and I can, I can compete with all of them. What was once an easy decision to enter the Major League Baseball draft was now clouded by Garrett's emerging hoop skills. Garrett loves action and so he really liked baseball, but when he got bigger and taller and started jumping really well and could slam dunk, I I think he thrived off of that action. As Garrett began dominating on the courts, he noticed the same spectator coming to all his games, former SJSU assistant coach David Miller. Coach Miller was the first one that recruited me, and he came to our tournaments on the UA circuit in like Georgia and Texas, and he was at every single one of my games in there. Like there's a bunch, so there's like 10 different courts and there's games happening all at one time, and he was always at my game. Coach Miles then called me, and I started talking to Coach Miles. When I look at what Garrett can do, I love the fact he played baseball, because all of those skills are very transferable to what we need to do in basketball. If you play baseball, you've got to go get the ball. You're an infielder, you got to scoop it up, throw it, and all of basketball is about coming up with the ball. Your ability to pass, catch, catch it, shoot it, very transferable. You have usually great hands, and you play catch so much, your instinct, your hand-eye coordination is terrific, and that translates great into basketball, too. Now the fact he throws it 95 miles an hour or whatever, that's just a bonus. As the Spartan season began, Garrett played catch up, learning from Coach Miles the positioning and fundamentals his teammates learned years earlier. So far this season, he's definitely just tried to get my basketball IQ a lot higher, just knowing what position I'm supposed to be in at what time, like if the ball swings over there to be on the midline and stuff like that, other than that. And Playing on the ball, like I didn't play on the ball at all my senior year. They played me at like a three or four, so I didn't really have to like dribble or come off screen. So I've been doing that a lot, coming off screens and making reads and throwing passes like that. You know, when you look at an inexperienced player like Garrett, there's pros and cons. There's certainly the pros of 
what he learns, he's gonna learn from what you want him to learn. So there's that. He doesn't have a lot of bad habits developed, so you don't have to break him any bad habits, but there's still that experience. And, and when you're in a high level conference like you are in the Mountain West Conference, you need guys with some experience, and that's what he's getting in taste right now. And I think he's only gonna benefit from more and more experience, and as time goes, he's only gonna get better and better. The Spartans got off to a fast start in the Mountain West Conference this year after being picked to finish far down the standings in preseason rankings. Upset wins over Colorado State and a 13-1 UNLV squad have San Jose State in position to make a run at the Mountain West Championship Tournament in March. So our first conference game was UNLV. We came in really prepared, really fired up. They came in, they were kind of just like nonchalant, like, oh, it's just San Jose State. So we were like, all right, that's how it's gonna be. We're gonna like show you who we are. That's the cool part about these guys on our team. They really do want to prove everybody wrong. They want to show that we're a bona fide contender for postseason play. With the Spartans exceeding expectations, Garrett's playing time has been limited, but he is soaking up as much knowledge as he can to be ready to contribute when his number is called. You know, the amazing part about all of freshmen in college basketball at this point in time, it's hard for them to break in. Less than 30% of all freshmen that are on college rosters are playing double digit minutes. And when I talk to them, what's amazing is I'm like, hey, are you okay? It's hard, you gotta stay patient. And they're like, we just wanna see the team win. I just wanna learn. It's really super cool to see. And that's what's making our program strong right now, our guys and attitudes like that. As the basketball season nears its completion, one question remains. Will Garrett find his way onto the SJSU baseball team? We have a restraining order against uh, Coach Stan Flippo, and so he can't come within 90 feet of, uh, of Garrett. I have not talked to the baseball coach here yet, no. I, I joked around with Coach Miles one time. I was like, oh, I'm gonna go play baseball after basketball season. He was like, nope, you're a basketball player. The San Jose State women's water polo team is living up to the moniker student athlete in every sense of the word. For as hard as they work in the pool, they apply the same effort in the classroom. That's really something that we try to promote here at San Jose State within our program. This last year, we were actually voted with the highest team GPA in the nation uh, amongst all the other universities. And so it just really speaks to their dedication, to their discipline, their development for their professional careers post-athletics. It's really exciting to see these young women really embrace this time in their lives to really set themselves up for success in the future. Sophomore driver and mechanical engineering student, Mike and Pardon came to San Jose State to utilize the opportunity-rich environment the university provides. I chose San Jose State because of the academics and water polo. It kind of offered me like all the things I wanted, like mechanical engineering is definitely like a really time-consuming degree, as so is playing a sport, and they allow you to like do both. And also being in San Jose, there's like a lot of opportunities around here to do things. Right in Mill Silicon Valley, they have a lot of partners and stuff. And you like can meet with companies and talk to them and make good connections. San Jose State's College of Engineering is participating in the 2023 Global Technology Institute program, which will send students to Finland this summer for the opportunity to study engineering abroad. Well, she's a mechanical engineering major, which is a, a really, it's a tough, extremely busy major. And despite the fact that she's a student athlete, which takes a lot of time, she's also has a very impressive academic record. And we thought that she'd be an excellent person for this particular program. I decided to apply for that program because I've always been interested in travel. Like since I was younger, we road trip across the country. And it's just like something I've always been really passionate about. That's one of my goals to be able to travel and see things and like learn new things from other people and learn like from other cultures. It was really cool to be able to like go somewhere, step in someone's shoes and be like, oh, okay, this is like something new they do. Like they eat this for this holiday. And it's really interesting. And I like that they had like a program where it's like I could blend engineering 
with like another one of my passions. So I get to travel to a new place and continue to study and learn. Incredible adventures are nothing new for Mike. In 2021, she was a member of a six person relay team to complete the Catalina Channel Swim, a grueling 20 mile nighttime swim from Catalina Island to the California mainland. You have to start from like dry land to an end in dry land. So I like walked up and then they said, ready, go. I started swimming and I had like a kayak next to me and tonight. And then you swim for an hour and then you have to like tag your next teammate. So it's like they tap you and then they swim for an hour and then the next person and then you just keep going until you make it to land. As the Spartan women's water polo team continues to bridge the gap amongst the top programs in the nation, Mikan looks to bring the same determined approach from the Catalina swim into the pool at San Jose State. She leads a lot by example. She'll be the first one in the water. She's the first one to really kind of hit our swim sets and really try to push herself every time that she's able to. I see her giving her teammates kind of that positive reinforcement when maybe they're having a challenge with one of our drills, but they've been able to see Mikan and her success level in it and, and just having that confidence that it can be done. I'm really excited for our team this year. Our goal is like definitely to make the top 10 and I think we definitely have like the skills to do it. Catch Mikan and the Spartans at the MPSF Conference Championships at the SRAC on the campus of San Jose State University, April 28th through the 30th. As the spring semester begins at San Jose State University, the Spartans have a new leader for 2023. Dr. Cynthia Teniente Matson was hired in November to become the next president of SJSU. As students return to campus to start the spring semester, Dr. Teniente Matson has been busy getting up to speed on all things Spartan. Well, this is an exciting place to be. I have met with some student athletes. I had a tour of the rec center with some of the students that work there. I have been in the library to art exhibits, variety of events celebrating Black History Month. I'm delighted with the opportunities I've had thus far to engage and connect with students. After a lengthy search that included numerous highly qualified candidates, Dr. Teniente Matson was chosen to lead SJSU after an accomplished tenure as president of Texas A&M San Antonio. A previous stop at Fresno State, which included duties as interim athletic director, has given Dr. Teniente Matson unique insight into what it takes to successfully run a university's athletic department and should prove beneficial when working with SJSU athletic director, Jeff Konya. She has wonderful experience at Fresno State. She was in the leadership position in terms of uh, being the chair of a selection of one of their athletic directors at Fresno State. And by being the CFO on that campus, understands kind of the intercollegiate athletics budget needs. It's gonna be a boon for us to have somebody so well-versed in intercollegiate athletics. While the Spartans hope to become a perennial powerhouse in the Mountain West Conference, it's Dr. Teniente Matson's hope that she can help bring attention, not just to athletics, but to all of San Jose State's accomplishments. All of the amazing student faculty research that's going on here was not something that I was really familiar with or expecting. So I think we're in some ways undertelling our story. Everywhere I go, I meet alumni. Alumni come up to me and tell me this fabulous things that they're doing with our lives and the impact that San Jose State has had on them. So part of my role is chief storyteller. So I'm looking for these stories because I want to make sure they get out into the universe of opportunities and content creation. Dr. Teniente Matson is the first woman of color to lead San Jose State University, and she is keenly aware of the importance of representing the diverse campus population at SJSU. So I think for communities of color in particular, it's important to have visible role models. I am beyond humbled and honored to be in this role. And to be the first in the year 2023 uh, says a lot, and I know that I won't be the last. And so I take that stage and that platform with a great deal of humility, but also I recognize the importance of the work. And so I want to be approachable, accessible, and open to students. 
I was also a first generation college student from humble beginnings. So I understand that world and I understand how difficult it is to persevere and to keep pushing forward in moments that you want to give up. I'm honestly very proud that we hired someone of a woman of color uh, to be our president. To be part of the culture and see someone like this can actually change the world just makes me feel like I can do the same thing just as much as she did. Our student athletes and students on this campus, female, ethnic minorities, can see somebody that's achieved and uh, has built their entire career path to lead a wonderful university like San Jose State. My husband and I had an opportunity to lead in another state, and we chose to live in a low-income area that had previously been redlined for, as a visible reminder and a visible symbol of the importance of equity and equity in education. Having an education changes lives, it changes neighborhoods, it changes communities, and that's what San Jose State is all about. And that's what our student athletes represent when they're out on the field playing with heart and playing with commitment and playing with passion, but it's really what they're going to do in the long run to change the world outside of College of Athletics that is going to lift San Jose State University and them as well to their next journey.